Welcome. NOAA has just released its January of 2023 Global Climate Update, and this video is a summary of that report. Well, let's start with an overview of what's going on around the world. Hawaii had its hottest January on record. North America had its fifth hottest January on record. South America, its 20th. Europe was about average temperature, just slightly above. Asia was about average temperature, but slightly below. Africa had its sixth hottest January on record. And Oceania was slightly above average. We had wetter than average weather in the west coast of the United States, in Europe, and in New Zealand. Well, let's see how these temperatures are distributed around the globe. This is a percentiles map which shows record highs and record lows. Record lows are indicated by dark blue, and there's a few pixels like that in the Antarctic region. But most of the planet is covered with much warmer than average or record high uh, pixels. And this indicates that the Earth is still warming. Now, there are some cold patches which are interesting. There's one off the east coast of Greenland. It's been there for quite some time. It's quite persistent. Siberia and northern China seem to be cooler than average. The area around northern India, Afghanistan and Iraq and Iran seem to be colder than average. There's a large area just north of Antarctica in the Pacific Ocean that is quite cooler than average. But the most important feature here for global climate is this one here in the Eastern Pacific. If you recall previous maps like this, this area was blue. It seems to be that La Nina has weakened significantly and most of the blue area has gone away and it's now sort of average temperatures. So we're expecting La Nina to disperse over the next few months and we'll get Enso neutral conditions or perhaps even an El Nino later in the year. Well, let's take a look at the temperature plot itself. The Average global temperature was the sixth warmest on record. As you can see here, we've had a large number of fairly high years in the last uh, decade or so. The only one that comes anywhere close to the last few years is 2005. But there seems to be a great deal of variability in these data. And that's mainly due to the instances of El Nino shown here with these red arrows or volcanic activity uh, this is 1992. There was a big dip in global temperatures. Or La Niña's, which also caused a dip in uh, global temperatures. So this adds to our variability, but it doesn't actually mean that the global temperatures are changing in any significant way. So let's see if we can unpack that. When we look at the upper atmosphere, we get a very similar picture. Lots of variability and note that the average here is between 1991 and 2020. That's where the zero point is put. And that in itself contains a lot of very high temperature data. So uh, this is going to be biased towards low temperatures. Overall, you can see there's a upward trend in the high altitude temperatures. This is the lower troposphere, which would be at about four or five kilometers in altitude for the average measurement. But we can unpack this by doing a number of different things. And one of them is to remove the variability from the El Nino-La Nina cycle. And we could do that by taking the Southern Oscillation Index for the current time and finding the temperature for uh, previous times when we had a very similar SOI. And this is what I've done here. And I've plotted the temperature over the last 70 years that way. And you can see, there's a very clear upward trend in temperatures with very little variability in there. I have not removed the volcanic activity. So some of the high and low points might be associated with that. The temperatures have been going upwards at a, with a rate of 0.16 degrees centigrade per decade. We can also take a look at the amount of ice and snow coverage the Northern Hemisphere has. There's not very much in the South, so it's not really worth looking at. But you'll see that overall, there seems to be a trend of about 0.21% per decade increase in ice and snow. 
However, the last six years are all well below average. We can also look at the distribution of precipitation around the globe, and you can see that there are areas that are prone to flooding and there are areas prone to drought. And I've shown some of those areas to the side here of those sorts of events that have occurred just in January. But if you look at the United States, there's a swathe of high precipitation from the southwest all the way up through the northeast. But north of that in the northern states and in southern Canada and also in Mexico and Florida, there seems to be a fairly significant drought going on. Similarly, in Europe, most of Europe seems to have had much above average rainfall, but the southern countries, Spain and southern France, uh, and then off into the Middle East, seem to have major droughts. People seem to be wondering why there's so much snow in the north at the moment. And the problem is, is that the Great Lakes have very little ice cover. So there's lots of water there, lots of warm water there, that can fuel these storms as they come through and add snow to them. The Great Lakes at the moment have about a 7% ice coverage. It's normally around about 40%. When the lakes are completely covered, there is no lake effect snow. Well, what about sea ice? If you look at the Northern Hemisphere, this is primarily the Arctic, you can see there's a strong downward trend and most of the last 20 years have been well below average. If you look at the Southern Hemisphere, this is the Antarctic, there is a downward trend, and this is the first time it's actually shown a downward trend, and that's because the last seven years have all been below average. Put all this together, and you get a loss of sea ice globally of nearly half a million square kilometers per decade. As I stated earlier, La Nina seems to be weakening this was a much larger and more intense patch of blue when we looked at this chart last time around. And it's expected to weaken yet further in the next month or two and go to ENSO neutral conditions in April or May. And we may even swing over to El Nino by the end of the year. That has major consequences for the weather in the United States. At the moment, it seems to be that the trend will have warmer temperatures in the south and up the eastern seaboard, while below average temperatures in the northwest. As far as precipitation is concerned, it will be relatively dry in the southern states and above normal in the northern states. So what conclusions can we draw from all of this? The Earth is still continuing to warm. Sea ice is losing area at a rate of about half a million square kilometers per decade. La Nina is still present, but weakening. And extreme weather uh, conditions, floods and droughts are affecting the earth globally. So thank you once again for watching. So until next time, stay safe and goodbye.